gentlemen. My name is Margaret Tardy. I'm from South Africa, Stellenbosch University. Um, the work that I'm presenting, we've titled Expanding First Year Problem Solving Skills, basically looking at unit conversions and estimations. My co-authors are actually my colleagues. We all teach first year engineering chemistry and Karen Wolf is not actually a lecturer, but she is our advisor, teaching and learning advisor. So as a background to what we're doing, we've been speaking about engineers, the competencies of engineers, and how these core competencies can be defined very broadly as, not very broadly, but specifically as problem solving. They have to have problem solving abilities, engineering design, application of scientific and engineering knowledge, amongst other things. I think this is the same in South Africa as it is internationally. This is what we require of our engineering graduates. More and more, um, we are requiring a lot out of our graduates due to the world that we're living in, the technologies, the disruptive technologies, the ever-changing technologies. So as academics, we're always thinking about how can we equip our students to become the effective engineers that we require them to be. So when we think about these higher level problem solving skills, design, synthesis, all the things that we require of our students, we recognize that within our curriculum, they start applying or they start dealing with these kinds of skills at higher levels. Now we're at a lower level, we're at the first year, and we recognize that what we are doing as first year lecturers is equipping students with basic skills which are basically taken for granted to an extent at higher level. And these skills include things like converting from one system of units to another. It's assumed that if you are doing a design, you know how to convert units. It's also assumed that a student is able to assess the validity or the reliability of their design. They're able to test whether um, the size of what they've just designed actually makes sense. This is an inherent skill we expect students to have. It might not necessarily be taught, and when we look at our particular context, there isn't really anywhere where you teach a student to evaluate whether their answer is correct. So we recognize that there's an opportunity at a first year level to cultivate these inherent skills. So again, when we talk about why is it important to cultivate these inherent skills, I already said that they're taken for granted. But what we must recognize is when these skills are not there, the result can be absolutely catastrophic. And this is a picture which I show my first year students a lot of the time. Classic story of NASA. They had a spacecraft, basically, which they sent into space. And due to an inability to work with Imperial as well as SI units, they crashed a billion dollar um, a piece of equipment. And that is from unit conversion. So, might not seem like it's inconsequential, but if it's not there, the result is newsworthy, as you can see. So the problem that we are faced with is that students often fail to solve problems with accuracy, and that is due to an inability to change between the systems of units, and students also have an inability to assess the physical meaning of the solutions that they are presenting. So this is what we want to address. So the research context, our aim is to develop a theoretically informed tool. And that tool is a unit conversions as well as estimations tool. Our context is first year engineering. And we teach a course called engineering chemistry. And this course is not a basic chemistry course. It's a problem solving course in which you apply chemistry principles. So there are about plus or minus 900 students, so there's quite a number. And the best way to deal with this kind of problem, we found, is in applying an online, um, an online quiz. So that is what we did. We developed a question bank, and we had a quiz which had 12 questions, 35 minutes. It was multiple choice. 
And this is a picture of what the students were seeing. So it was multiple choice, they were answering online, and then they got results after the test. And the students took the test multiple times. So instead of just giving the students a quiz, we wanted to get more information out of it which would inform our teaching practice and will enable us to assist students with the learning and have deep experiences with learning. So we went to the theory and the theoretical framework which we decided to use to help us along the way comes from legitimation code theory and is the epistemic plane. So the epistemic plane takes knowledge and puts it into two dimensions. And these dimensions are what is knowledge and how is knowledge applied. So this can be represented on a Cartesian plane and my colleague earlier this morning spoke about the epistemic plane. So this is what it then looks like. This is the what of knowledge. The what of knowledge can vary between bounds that include strongly fixed or well-accepted principles and concepts, such as chemistry principles, and down to lower, more relative relations, weakly bounded or ambiguous phenomena. The how of knowledge being applied can vary from standardized approaches, such as unit conversions, converting from imperial system to SI units, up to open, more open-ended approaches, situational approaches. So if we split image, if, no, if we split knowledge into the epistemic plane, we have four quadrants or four insights in which we can classify knowledge. And that gives us insight into what we are actually doing. And this is how we use this approach. We took the unit conversions test and we wanted to look at how the required competencies will be achieved by a student. So if you look at the unit conversions and you look at estimations, what the unit presents is something that is well understood by the scientific community and accepted. This is something that occurs in the, that belongs in this quadrant, which we call the purest quadrant. Converting units is a procedure, it is a fixed procedure which we all know how to do, and that belongs in a doctrinal quadrant. Estimations are more relative and they're very dependent on the situation. So we find that that belongs in this quadrant. So by using the epistemic plane, we can see that the competencies that we require of students transverse knowledge in different areas. And this is what we're requiring our students to do. So we took a little step deeper and we looked at the questions that we were giving our students. Move forward. Sorry. And this is an example of an estimation question which occurs in the test. Actually, sorry. This is an example of a unit conversions question. And the question is, milk has a density of 64.6 pound mass per foot cubed, that's imperial units, what is its density in basic units? So the student needs to convert from imperial to SI units. Now in order to do that, the student has to have the fundamental principles, which is quantities, and take those fundamental principles and apply a procedure. So what we see is a shift from principles to procedure. This is what we expected students to do. With estimations, it was more, it's more complex, an example of an estimation question we gave them was estimate the change in density of water if it was cooled from 100 to 0 degrees Celsius. Now there's a number of things that are ways a student can approach solving such a problem. If we look at the fundamentals, the student can, have, can look at a number of, um, draw from a number of different principles that include states of matter. Water is changing phase. They can draw from phase changes, energy changes. There are a number of different principles they can draw on. Doctrinally, density is mass over volume. This is known, this is fixed, so that is a doctrine. But in order to estimate the change in density, the student requires more information. 
this is where it becomes more open-ended and situational. So a student can approach the, the question from condensation, they can approach it from evaporation, whichever way they perceive, and that highlights, brings in another aspect to knowledge. Who is actually answering the question? Does a student relate more to cold or to hot? So in looking at this question, we see that there's a lot of shifting that a student is required to do. So this is what we anticipated the students would um, go through and how the students would learn. How we evaluated this, how we evaluated this was to get feedback from the students and to look at the different marks. So we got a mixed bag of feedback from the students, which actually informed a lot with regards to how we were perceiving our learning tool and how students were learning. So these are some of the, com some, some of the comments that we got from students. This one was very interesting. The questions were silly and they required knowledge that I didn't have. And this was pertaining to estimation questions. Students couldn't understand why they would have to answer questions that are fairly ambiguous. Students also didn't understand why they had to continuously do unit conversions. They thought it was something trivial and they wanted to do something more interesting. But there were some students who had a positive experience. For, as you can see here, the student thought, says he was not very bad, but after doing the tests, realized that they can actually improve their skills. So that was positive feedback and that made us feel good that maybe we were actually doing something. The results spoke for themselves. We did the test in three rounds. The first round, the students performed rather dismally. We didn't expect them to perform so badly. But as time went on, after two rounds, the pass mark shifted from a low average to a much higher average. So if anything, what we managed to achieve was that the students, through repetitive learning, were able to improve in their skills with the basic competencies. So, in conclusion, what we developed was a tool, but it was not just a tool that facilitated learning for students. It highlighted some key things. The perceptions and the difference in perceptions between us as educators or people who are facilitating learning and the students who are actually doing the learning. And that was very valuable and we got that from the epistemic plane and we are currently applying um, different interventions to try and bridge the gap between lecturer thinking and student um, interaction with this particular tool. And then I'm gonna stop there. So thank you very much, Margaret.